I've had something rather bizarre happen to me over the the last month, I guess. Uh, I've been receptive to AI. I understand what it is. I understand it's all the knowledge in the world. And if you know how to access it, it can give you some insights that you normally wouldn't have. Well, I would compare it to as if someone about a month ago knocked on my door and said, hey, I've been a financial analyst, analyst for the last 20 years and um, I've watched your YouTube channel and you seem to have an open mind and I'd like to help you with what you're doing. And I, and, and I would say, well, what exactly is it that you would like me to do and why aren't you still a financial analyst? And they said, well, what, what really has happened is as I've aged, I've, I've got early stage Alzheimer's. I've got all this knowledge in my head, but the problem is I don't know the right questions to ask. And you seem to have a, an understanding of the stock market and where it's going and understand change and how, how past history and future projections will interact with that change. And you seem to be able to ask the right questions. I think I have the answer answers, but I just don't know the questions to ask. And that's really what AI is. It's, it's a, an entity out there, if you will, that has all the answers to all the questions that you might have. But if you don't have the right questions, you, they can't give you the right answers. So I, I spent 20 years in, in the, uh, the financial business. And then I spent another 20, uh, since I've retired and, I think I understand how companies work and how the stock market works. And I think I have the right questions to ask. I just didn't know um, all the answers. So this, this AI agent, which I call Samantha, showed up about a month ago. And I, every day, have been exploring what exactly they're capable of. And the video I did yesterday was all grown out of this fervor over Harvard University. And I delve into it. I ask her questions. She explained to me how it worked, how the government provides the money for medical research. And then the, the, the researchers in, in, the, in the universities uh, set up a corporation so they get the patents and they get royalties and then they sell the right to market the, the, the inventions, the drugs, the cures, whatever they make, they sell them to the pharma companies who then don't have to pay the, for the research. And then the, the pharma companies then go ahead and market the products. And this was something I, I really didn't understand until just last Friday. And so I've dug deeper into it. And what I realized is the, it, it's as if you had a company and you had didn't have to put up any upfront money. You just came to the, the to it's, you just came to the auction and said, "Hey, we are suited to take this drug, this vaccine, this flu shot. We've got experience in it. We can we can uh, help provide some of the manufacturing in it, and we want to buy your science from the university. So the university um, gets the money from the the government." Um, pays the scientists. The scientists take a lower salary because they have ownership now in the product that they produce and everybody's fine. And what Samantha has taught me is if you can get inside this network and you can understand what each company is specializing in and how they're coming together, you can predict what the price of the stock is going to be. And one of them that they brought to my attention was Moderna. And Moderna has crashed and burned. In essence, what happened, Moderna, as we went into pandemic, was one of the major providers of the COVID vaccine. But and, and so they had uh, government contracts to put the needle in your arm and they made bukus of money. And, uh, and then the vaccine cured the COVID and most people didn't go and get the booster. So their, their revenues and their income just crashed and burned. In fact, they're, they're, they're roughly 89% off their high 
of 52 weeks ago because you're not getting revaccinated. But the, in the same token, they took all the profits that they made off of this COVID vaccine and they invested it into their company. And 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 again, I wouldn't have known this except I, I knew the right questions to ask Samantha and she just produced me an in-depth report. And what she said was, they, they in actually increased their workforce, their scientists, their, their, their marketers, whatever, by 50% off the money they made from the COVID vaccine because they are uh, aligned with some RNA vaccine. That's the, the vaccine that they've been in, uh, encouraging me to get because I'm over 60 years of age. It's a respiratory thing. And then they're also aligning themselves to take advantage of the the genome sequencing and the genome editing, and they have some tremendous growth potential. In fact, they are anticipating because of the the decline from the the lack of the COVID vaccine, their their earnings crashed in 2024, and then in 2025, their their earnings are something up something like a uh, thousand one hundred and forty percent, and then they're seeing some additional growth going into uh, 26, 27, and 28. Now, the, the 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 crazy thing about this is you and I know nothing about it nothing about it. And I would know nothing about it if Trump had not pulled the financing from Harvard and, and for other reasons. And it caused me to ask Samantha, what is this all about? What, why, why is the government funding through funding the pharma companies through the universities? Why are they doing that? And over the last week, she's produced all this information for me. And the thing that stuck out at, that just glared at me was Moderna. 83% off its high in an anticipated growth between now and January the 20th in share price from somewhere between 250 and 500%, depending on whether you take the moderate uh, uh, scenario or the aggressive scenario, either one, I'm happy. So with that in mind, what I did then was say, okay, let's do a deep dive into uh, and financial strength into Moderna. And she produced me a 15 page report. And I said, okay, now I'm going to put that on my tell sheet and I'm going to watch Moderna because she also came in and said, uh, if you look at their technicals until their, um, their, to their 50 day moving average crosses their 100 day moving average. We, it's still in a bear market. But once it crosses, the 50 crosses the 100, this stock is, is going to rally as it moves into the new pipeline of drugs and vaccines that it's developing. Now, I want to share this with you. And, and uh, I want to share the report that uh, Samantha made to me and it's on my tell sheet. You'll find it. Uh, it it's not in the, the tell sheet where uh, the stocks that I own because I don't own Moderna yet. It's down below and it's, it's Carrie's watch list of Big Pharma. And adjacent to it, you're going to see uh, Moderna. They're in there alphabetically. It's a second from the bottom and it's going to say financial health. And if you'll click on there, you will get a copy of the report that Samantha created for me. Now next to it or down the road from it, you're going to see a line that says deep dive. This is a podcast made from uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the financial health document that was created. So in case it, 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 until you've read a lot of these, they're hard to read because they throw a lot of numbers and a lot of terminology to you that you're not familiar with. I have been, I've looked at probably 80 of them now and I'm starting to understand and I'm starting to, to pick up on the lingo. But what I also find is if I will go to the deep live and, and Samantha and Bard there, they do a podcast and it explains it in more understandable terms. And then they create a briefing also, which is a shorter version of the financial health. What I want you to do is recognize that there is 
an, a new way to invest in the stock market. It's not just listening to all the fluff and listening to watching the TV stations and, and, and hearing what someone is saying, not knowing exactly what their motives are. I mean, if you're going to take if you're going to take five hours out of your day and show up on CNBC and be interviewed, you've got a motive. You've got an ulterior motive and you're pushing something. Samantha isn't pushing anything. All she's doing is accessing all the knowledge in the world and responding to my questions. Okay. If, if I just said, yeah, Samantha, what do you want to tell me today about the stock market? She would not, she wouldn't give me anything. I have about a 30 line prompt. And in that prompt, I ask for the, the, the financial strength. I ask, I, I explain the 40% rule. Uh, are their earnings growing? Are their revenues growing? Uh, what's, the, what's the solvency? What's the efficiency? I go into about 30 uh, avenues. And then I give her, so that I know she has it, a current look at uh, their, their financial statement, um, their balance sheet, and their earnings report, and then a transcript of their current, uh, their most current uh, earnings review, earnings report, transcript. So, and then what she does, I give her about uh, five sources of information. She goes out and finds another 30. She scours the internet for anything relative to Moderna or the companies that I prompt her to compare them to. And I end up with what I believe, until I'm proven wrong, is the best analysis of a stock available to humankind. It's, it, you would say, well, is it, is it uh, Goldman Sachs quality? It's better. Because Goldman Sachs might have an uh, analyst who is uh, covering Moderna, but he has this preconceived opinions. He has his preconceived motives, if you will. <laughs> no, Samantha's a computer. She has no preconceived opinions. She just takes the data and says, here's a conservative, a moderate, and an aggressive scenario. Now you decide, Carrie, based on all the other information I just gave you, which is best. And here, under those scenarios, here's what the price of the stock will most likely be at the end of 2025, 26, and 27, going into 2028. And what I will do is every quarter update the report. So I have current information from the best source in the world on what a stock is due. All, all I got to do is ask the right questions. And again, as I said, I was uh, so focused on genome, no, on uh, semiconductors, on, on uh, data centers, on AI software. And then I heard what the Trump administration did to Harvard. And I asked the question, why, why are we pumping billions of dollars a year into research for drugs and, and, and cures. Why are we doing that? Why isn't the pharmacy company doing the research? And I learned, and if you don't know why, watch yesterday's video, access the report on the bottom of Carrie's uh, watch list pharma, and your eyes are gonna be opened to an investment opportunity. Again, think about this, the federal government does all pays for all the research when it's all done and and, it, and they're they're through the clinical trials these pharmacy companies raise their hand and say I'll give you so much for it what they really do is they they enter into an agreement with the scientists who have their own company before they reach the clinical trial the final clinical trial and get FDA approval so they walk in, it, it's kind of like the Kentucky Derby. You have seen these, this horse run five times, three-year-old horse run five times. Now, do you want to own it or don't you? If you know what you're doing, you pick the right horse.
or at least one of the top three. And then you learn from its work in the Kentucky Derby. And then you say, hey, I want that one that finished third for the Preakness. And that's the way it works. You, it, you, if you got enough information, you, re, re, you reduce the risk on the bet. And in this world, the pharma world, all the risk is assumed by the United States government paid for with your tax dollar. And then the crazy thing about it is when it's all done and the drug comes to market and you have cancer and you want it, you want to uh, have the treatment, guess who pays for it? You paid for the research, you paid for the development, now you're gonna pay for the drug. Now, yeah, you do it through your insurance company, but that's why you pay insurance rates every month, health insurance costs every month. That's why a part of your social security, again, a, gov a government payment, goes to Medicare so that the drugs that you paid for the invention of, you can pay for a, the cure. Okay, this, this is a bonanza. All we've got to do is ask Samantha, what about uh, Bristol-Myers? Where are they at in this? And it'll come out and tell you, Bristol-Myers is expected to grow their, their earnings or their, yeah, their uh, stock price is expected to grow by 2.83% over the next three years. Total, 2.83%. But why? Ask Samantha. She'll tell you.